For our second lesson, from lesson 7.2, we're going to be looking at solving an equation that involves decimals. And our goal for this lesson is to learn to solve equations that have decimals as coefficients or constant terms. Now a quick note that I want to include here is just kind of of a comparison from lesson 7.1 and 7.2. And the note that I want to make when comparing 7.12 and 7.1 is that the method for solving equations is the in the two sections are essentially the same. The only extra step is that you begin solving by eliminating the fractions or decimals from the equation. So again, the only difference between 7.1 and 7.2 is that in 7.2 we have to get rid of fractions, and in this lesson we're going to learn to get rid of decimals. So in 7.2a, what we would do is we would find the least common multiple of all of the denominators of all the fractions in the equation. With 7.2b, when we're dealing with decimals, we're going to go about solving these a little bit differently. We're going to still use the same general principle of multiplying the entire equation by a number, but that number is going to be much easier to find than it was with fractions. We're not going to have to find least common multiples or anything like that. Let's take a look at how we can find and solve equations with decimals instead of fractions. For our first example, we have 3.6w is equal to 1.6w plus 24. So our goal here right away is to eliminate the decimal. We want to get rid of the decimal if we can. So in order to do that, what we want to take a look at is the place value where the decimal terminates or where the decimal comes to an end. So in this first, this first term, this 3.6w, we see that we have a decimal here of 0.6 that ends in the tenths place. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind, tenths place. Our next decimal also terminates in the tenths place. And our last term, there's no decimal at all, so both of our decimals here end in the tenths place. Therefore, in order to get rid of our decimals, what we actually want to do is we want to multiply the entire equation by 10. Multiplying by 10 because the decimals terminate in the tenths place. So what I'm going to do, just like yesterday, I'm going to show my distribution of the 10 into the entire equation. So I'm going to start with 10 multiplied by 3.6w, and we should know from our unit in scientific notation that we multiply by something by a power of 10, we're just going to move our decimal place one place value to the right, making the number bigger. So we have 36w is equal to, now I move on to my next term, 1.6w. Again, I move my decimal place one, pla one unit to the right, giving me 16w. And finally, my last term, 10 times 24. There is no decimal place to move here, but still, 10 times 24 should be easy for us, giving us plus 240. All right? And now this is a problem that you can solve on your own, but it's a pretty easy one, so we'll go ahead and solve it together. First step here, we have our constant term over here on the right. There is no constant term over here on the left, so let's move our variables over to the left. So I'm going to start off by subtracting 16w from both sides. That'll cause these to cancel. 36w minus 16w over here on the left will give us 20w is equal to 240. To isolate w, we're going to divide both sides by 20. The 20s cancel on the left, and we get w is equal to, let's see, the zeros will cancel here. 24 divided by 2 will give us 12. So w is going to be equal to 12. All right, so first example, we started off the problem by multiplying the entire equation by 10. And again, the reason that we did that is because our decimal places had a ended at the tenths place. Let's take a look at another one. Example 2, we have 2.25t plus 5 is equal to 13.5t plus 14. 
So we go ahead, first thing that we do is we look at our decimals that we have and to see where they terminate. So here we have 0.25 that terminates in the hundredths place. Over here we just have 0.5 that terminates in the tenths place. Whichever decimal terminates further from the decimal point is the value that you want to multiply that by. So because we have a number that terminates in the hundredths place here, in the tenths place here, we actually want to multiply by 100 because that will ensure that we get rid of this entire decimal. So we're going to multiply this equation by 100. So I put in parentheses with 100 out front, meaning that we're just going to move our decimal places two units to the right. So 100 times 2.25, two ocean waves to the right, will give us 2 125t, bring down my plus sign, now that was by doing this, by distributing the 100 to the 2.25t, now I'm going to distribute the 100 to the 5, 100 times 5 is going to give me 500, bring down my equal sign, next move over to this side of the equ equation, 100 times 13.5, two decimal places, so this has not become 135t, it's 1350t. Okay, 1350t, and then finally 100 times plus 14 becomes 1400. Okay, so now it's a matter of, I know that these are big numbers and everything, that's okay. Just because they're big numbers does not make it difficult, or does not make it much more difficult. Okay, might make it a bit more difficult, but we are still more than capable of doing the math required in order to solve this equation for t. In fact, we'll go through it really quickly, just to kind of recap where we've been, what we're doing. First thing that I want to do is I want to determine which coefficient is smaller. So I have 225 and I have 1350. Well, of those two, 225 is going to be my smaller coefficient, so that's the side that I want to eliminate the coefficient from. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 225t. And that will cause these to cancel over here. I'm going to bring down my 500 is equal to, and now I have 1350 minus 225. And that gets me 1,125t, bring down my plus 1,400. Now what I want to do, subtract 1,400 from both sides. And I do that because I have my variable term on the right, so I want to get my constant term over to the left. 500 minus 1,400 is going to give me negative 900 is equal to 1125t. Next step, we want to isolate the variable, meaning that we have to divide both sides by 1125. That causes the 1125 to cancel, and if we do the math, and I'm actually, I would actually be okay with using a calculator on that one, we would get t is equal to negative 0 0.8. So again, dealing with some bigger numbers, but that doesn't make the problem impossible. I'd rather deal with bigger numbers than with decimals, certainly. So let's take a look at one more example. This will be a word problem where we have to write out the equation using decimals, and then we will have to get rid of those decimals using the method that we use, for example, 1 and 2. Third example says, Logan has two aquariums. One aquarium contains 1.3 cubic feet of water and is therefore clearly smaller, and the other contains 1.9 cubic feet of water, which would make it the bigger aquarium. The water in the larger aquarium weighs 37.44 pounds more than the water in the smaller aquarium. Write an equation for this scenario, then find the weight of one cubic foot of water. So thinking through this equation, we have some key information that we need to identify. We have 1.3, we have 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.
we have 37.44. All of those numbers are going to go into our equation. Now the cubic feet of water, that's going to be our variable. So, or that's going to be our variable term. So we have to think about this. We have a smaller fish tank and a bigger fish tank. The bigger fish tank weighs more than the smaller fish tank. So we're not going to take 1.9x plus 37.44 because that's going to be way bigger than the 1.3 cubic feet of water. To make them equal to each other, we have to actually add the 37.44 pounds to the smaller fish tank. That would make the weights equal to each other. So our equation then would look like this. We would have 1.9x is equal to 1.3x plus 37.44. So now that's our equation that we need. So we're done with our first part where it says to write an equation for this scenario. We're done with that. Now we have to go ahead and actually solve for y, or I'm sorry, solve for x, where we find the weight of one cubic foot of water. So to start off, we need to identify what we're going to multiply this entire equation by. Here we see that we have one decimal place. Here again is another decimal place. And here are two decimal places. Since we go to the hundredths place with this one, that tells us that we need to multiply the entire equation by 100. So we start off 1.9 times 100, move the decimal place to place values. That gives us 190x. Bring down our equal sign. Then we multiply 100 times 1.3, and that gives us 130x. Bring down our plus sign. Then finally, 100 times 37.44 gives us 3744. All right, so now we, are, we have eliminated our decimal places. We can go ahead and solve this for x, which will give us the weight of one cubic foot of water. In doing so, notice we have a variable term on the left side, but we don't have a constant term. Therefore, we want to move our, our variable term over to the left side. So we're going to start by subtracting 130x. Subtract 130x from both sides. That'll cause the variable term to cancel on the right. And on the left, we get 190 minus 130 gives us 60x. Bring down our equal sign, doing our best to keep those aligned vertically. And then we bring down our 37, 44. So now, divide both sides by 60 to get our variable term by itself. Variable terms cancel, or coefficients cancel on the left, leaving us with x is equal to, and this is one that I'm going to use my calculator for, and I know it's going to be 60-something because... 6 goes into 37 6 times, so it's going to be 60-something, and when I use my calculator, I get 62.4. So x is equal to 62.4 pounds. So 1 cubic foot of water, so that's 1 foot by 1 foot by 1 foot, is going to weigh 62.4 pounds. That's a heavy cubic foot. All right, so that's our, that's our third example. Um, there is one more short section that I want to cover in these notes, uh, kind of tying back to what we learned in 7.1b when you were given an equation and you were asked to come up with a scenario that could represent that equation. So for our last example, we're given the equation 0.95x is equal to 0.55x plus 60. And again, we're asked to come up with a scenario. If you do this assignment in MyHRW, they'll generate the scenario for you, and all you have to do is ins uh, insert the, the values that you're given in the problem in the correct places, and you should be good. But if I'm going to come up with, an, uh, with a scenario for this equation just off the top of my head, I might say that it's something like a, an annual music subscription service, where X is the number of songs that you download a year, and so on one hand, for one music subscription service, they just charge you a flat rate of 95 cents per song. 
Okay, so over here, every song that you download costs 95 cents. Whereas with this subscription service, they charge you an annual fee of $60. So whether you download zero songs or whether you download a million songs, you pay that $60 no matter what. On top of that $60 for every song that you download, you have to pay an additional 55 cents. Okay, so 95 cents per song over here versus 55 cents per song over here. But on the right side, you have to factor in that $60 that you have to pay every year as well. Okay, so scenario that I'm going to give you guys is for a music subscription. So an annual music subscription. Kind of ran out of space, but that's okay. All right, so if you guys want to come up with additional examples of scenarios that might match that um, might match that equation, go to money. I would encourage you to always go to money because that's something that everyone can relate to um, and it's easy to or it's easier to identify scenarios that match especially decimals when it comes to money. All right. So that brings our 7.2 video to 7.2 B video to a close. Our goal with this lesson is to learn to solve equations that have decimals as coefficients or constant terms. Write down any questions or comments that you have about the lesson and we can discuss them in class.